Las Vegas. This is NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Beat. Here's your host, Ryan Salazar. All right, we're back at the 2016 NAB Show uh, at NAB Show Live. It was really awesome just having Oscar De La Hoya a moment ago. Uh, now I've got another rock star in a different form. Dean Lyon, founder and CEO of Splinter Studios. By coincidence, he's from the Fort Lauderdale area as well. Uh, we met at NAB about four or five years ago at an Autodesk event. Uh, how you doing, Dean? I'm doing really good. Cool. So I was always really impressed with your career. Um, the things you've done, uh, you, you've done a lot of motion picture work. Uh, could you talk about that? Sure. Well, you know, I have a passion for doing visual effects and computer graphics and uh, uh, spent most of my life in Hollywood and uh, traveled around the world doing uh, everything from motion pictures to theme parks. Uh, and so you're really talented with color correction. Uh, what's the difference, because I'm not a color guy, a lot of folks say color grading, color correction. <laughs> is it the same? Is it not? Yeah, I, I think probably the best term these days is digital color grade. Uh, the problem with color correction is it always sounds like you're trying to fix something. And in, in actuality, most color grading is for enhancement or improvement of the way the picture looks. Okay. Um, and your experience comes from, uh, well, talk about some of the more, more, more about the overseas stuff, some of the motion picture stuff. Well, you know, it was kind of ironic that after spending most of my life in Hollywood working on big films like Armageddon, Independence Day, uh, Air Force One, that I actually uh, ended up in New Zealand through uh, some strange circumstances and worked on the biggest films I'll ever work on in my life, the three Lord of the Rings pictures. Uh, that's gotta be just amazing to do something like that. And New Zealand, at least my understanding, at least, at least about four or five years ago, was certainly a hot spot for that sort of thing. Yeah, the, the interesting thing was when I first arrived, uh, New Zealand was still pretty much hidden. I still remember during Rings saying, gosh, I really liked it when New Zealand was the world's best kept secret. Uh, I was just back in Wellington at the end of last year and it's now turned into a real movie town now that Jim Cameron has moved there full time. We've got oh, wow. Peter Jackson and Jim Cameron uh, growing a huge industry down there. Oh, that's excellent. Um, we've chatted with his partner many times, Vince Pace. Uh, I know him fairly well. Um, so the show, the 2016 NEB show, what are you excited about? Yeah, so my main mission on opening day was I'm really trying to find the next editing system for my studio. And uh, one of the things that interests me was where uh, Blackmagic Resolve is. And uh, certainly last year when I showed up, uh, they said, oh yeah, we're doing editing, watch this page. And uh, you know, we've had a play with Resolve 12 throughout the year, but Resolve 12.5 actually has some really strong editing enhancements. And uh, we really wanted just you know, give it a give it a go and see how it does as an editing system. Okay. Yeah. No. It's it's really important when you have uh, editing platforms in a facility, specifically where you have multiple editors, and, and you need shared storage, you need asset management systems. Metadata has to be entered properly or ingested properly from the original shoots. Are you guys big on that? Oh well, of course. Uh, being from visual effects, my interest is quality from beginning to end. So we keep track of all those things. Uh, based on quality and efficiency as far as moving it through the different pipelines, whether it's editing, visual effects, or the color grade. Uh, we also bumped into another friend of mine from Hollywood, a well-known producer who's now uh, developed a editing in the cloud oh. product uh, called Bebop Technologies. Uh, they're not on the floor of the show, they're up in a whisper suite, but the interesting thing about them is uh, they're up and coming. Okay. Um, you know, uh, the show, so, so I'll just share some of my excitement on stuff. So I'm a post guy. Um, I love asset management. I know it sounds like such a boring topic, but I'm, I'm really big on the proper storage and the proper asset management. How do you get those assets from one place to another? Proxy files, transcoding, delivery to the, <laughs> to the distribution place. It's all in my head, uh, but I love all that stuff. And, um, but this morning, we, it was really cool. I'm not sure if Liz, if you guys have that for my shoot this morning. It's I'm not asking for a package, don't worry. But there was this really cool technology, and I see Michael Arts says he's probably seen what I'm talking about. So this, there's a booth in the, in the central hall where they've got probably like 40, 50 cameras. I think it's called the Z4 or something like that. And man, is it cool. And they did a shot with me. They did a, I jumped in the air, they did a shot, and then they processed, they like rendered out these frames of video, turned it into this cool, like, uh, what do you call it? What's that movie where everybody jumps in the air? They're like, and then, then you know, there's, a, there's like the camera moves like that. It's really cool. But anyways, they're doing that. That was really cool. That was probably my favorite thing in Central Hall. Cool. But anyways, so um, 
You're in Fort Lauderdale. Share your, uh, share your website. Uh, it's uh, splinterstudios.com. And uh, my interest is in building the next generation uh, visual effects and animation studio. I talk a bit about that on the website. Okay, well, we certainly, uh, we certainly respect what you do, and everybody's got to check his website out. Again, Dean Lyon, founder and CEO of Splinter Studios. We will be right back with a good friend of mine, Michael Artsis. See you guys soon. Hi, I'm Cindy Edwards. And I'm Jerry Penicoli from the nationally syndicated show Daytime. And you're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Um, we've got a special guest. I was just talking about him a minute ago at the 2016 NAB Show, Michael Artsis. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, just, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to stay alive, right? You're, you're, you're doing great. Everybody's talking about the show. They love the show. And your crew is phenomenal. A big hand to Liz and everybody who works yeah, so hard let's behind the scenes. Let's give our production crew a round of applause, they, guys. They are doing wonderful. Doing an unbelievable job. Yeah. So, so talk about what you've uh, been seeing. Well, first of all, I saw the same 4D setup that you were just talking about that you saw. It's, it's basically taking the bullet cam that was used in The Matrix. Uh, Howard Stern had it as his intro for E! for many years on his E! television show. Oh, really? And uh, it's, it's taking that and uh, doing it in 4D, which is, is completely surrounding you. And it's doing it, what I was impressed by, and you talked to me about this off air a little bit, is that it's doing it in a, a minute and a half or two minutes where that processing would take weeks before. So a week later, two weeks later is when it, you would see the results. And you kind of had to guess. It was, it was like developing film. It wasn't you know, shooting it in real time and being able to, to do that. So uh, that's really impressive. I, I think that, you know, Canon, I, I just sat with them and, and did an interview with them, and I was impressed when I said, why, why 8K? We can't even deliver 4K and we're talking 8K? What's the point? And they said there were a couple points. One, you could shoot 8K, down res to 4K when we have a delivery method for 4K, and, and it'll make it more stunning. Okay, I could kind of buy that, but I'm, I'm like, that's pushing it a little. Number two, 8K still a few years off, they don't have a real camera for sale. It's really a prototype. But the reality is we see screens everywhere, especially in Las Vegas or Times Square, New York. Uh, these huge LED, beautiful screens. Uh, I just interviewed D3. They put in about 80% of the screens in Vegas wow. and Times Square and Dubai. These screens are going to be more and more plentiful, and they need high-resolution images. You might not be delivering this to somebody's home, but when a company spends millions of dollars to produce a video that runs on a $40 million billboard, you want it to be 8K and as sharp as possible. Part of it is how big the LEDs are, how close together they are, the nits, the daylight versus you know uh, non-daylight, but a large part of it is how good the quality of the image is. And so that's where 8K really has its, it makes its mark. And I said, oh, you know what? In that scenario, I completely get it. Right now, it's the only scenario you really want it for, but you know, a year from now, or two years from now, that'll be what it's perfect for. And then 10 years from now, I guess, we'll be looking at 8K as a real format. But I don't know, how much can the eye really detect at that point? Right. I don't know that it's really worth it. Uh, there are some really great things here at NAB 2016. VR is taking the place by storm, as we talked about the other day. But I got a chance to see the Sphere Cam. Very impressive for a really moderate price, about $3,000. Uh, and I got a chance to play with it. And I think that that's going to come out later this year. And it was started as a Kickstarter product or project. And uh, I think that that's going to be the one that leads the charge for most people. You know, when you start putting six GoPros together, you're spending the same amount uh, as spending $3,000, basically, uh, for one camera that does it all. It stitches inside the camera and it streams live. Uh, and, and that was uh, nice. Somebody yeah, walked that was right through the crazy. Uh, set. It was interesting. So, um, <laughs> you know, you expect that when you're not in the television and, and film <laughs> right. world. When, right. when people see cameras in the film world, well, usually welcome they walk to live around. television, yes, right? Yes, live television. Um, um, yeah. Oh, so and then I was going to say uh, the Nokia Ozo is, is pretty spectacular. They've lowered their price for certain production companies to help them out if you qualify that are smaller production companies to 45000 I still think. I don't know if it's the red of VR, you know, in my mind, especially because everything's going to change so quickly. Committing 60 or 45,000 even to that seems like a lot, but it is the premier camera at this point. Yeah, so I've been hanging out, well, in all the halls, yeah. really, and I've been just kind of running around. I'm doing my, my top five picks. I always do these fun little segments sure. that I love to do every year. And, um, I've been in South Hall today. I was in North Hall this morning as well. Uh, man, I'm just excited by all the, the toys. And the you show. probably drool all over uh, South Hall because that's all the post-production stuff. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a post guy. I'm yeah. a post nut. And, and I was actually down there this morning, some, some pals of mine from Silver Draft, 
and uh, where they build supercomputers. Do you know about SilverDraft at all? Yes, yes. Um, but they uh, they build these multi-thousand core render farms, and they're just freaking crazy. Well, and it's so necessary now. You know, five years ago when people started talking about building render farms, it was like, okay, well that's for the really, really big guys. Now yeah. everybody needs it because, we're just talking to Canon, their regular cameras are shooting 800 megabits per second. The, the Nokia Ozo, the VR camera, does one terabyte for every 20 seconds of footage. Uh, you're talking about, uh, even talking to JVC before, you're talking about massive amounts of storage for every single file, every oh, yeah. single second. And so you need a render farm to handle all of it, not only for rendering, but also for you know, transcoding and editing. Uh, speaking of JVC, by the way, they have a camera with a sensor in it. There's a 4K sensor. You can put a prime lens on the camera, and they've built a computer into this camera so that it remaps the image, and you can zoom through oh. a prime lens without, it's not a digital zoom, it's not cropping the sensor. You're not losing resolution, you're zooming through the lens by using remapping, and it is sharp as a tack. Wow. Yeah. You know, there's, there's companies like TVU and LiveU that allows you to, allow you to have those backpacks sure. with cellular cards. We were, uh, we were at, uh, excuse my cough, by the way. I just, I, I've got the same cough it's the going dry, Yeah, <coughs> It's the live, or the dry air. So um, we were at JVC yesterday, and they had these wireless cameras, essentially. Yes. Unbelievable stuff that's it, coming out. It's so exciting. I, I remember when I started in the business, you probably had the same thought. I looked at the live truck and the camera, and I said, one day I had this cell phone, and it was about the size of my arm. Yeah. And I, I said, one day, they're going to take the camera and this phone and they're going to tether them together and we're going to stream live. Now, it's gone beyond that. The phone the, and the camera, the camera are together. Yeah, and, and it's got like six cell cards in it, you know, or whatever. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and yeah, we're running around with a live view pack. Uh, I, I was live from the floor wirelessly for the first time ever today. Andrea, my co-host, has been doing that a lot. Oh, cool. But for the first time ever, I was live in Central Hall. We've been South, Central, and North Hall. It's spectacular what we can do. Now the, uh, <laughs> again, excuse me, uh, the sprocket uh, section of the, of the hall, unbelievable. And, and uh, Harry Glazer, I know him well. Yeah. Um, it's just everybody's so talented, and they they all believe in what they're what they're building. I, I love Sprocket because it, it shows that NAB is committed to the innovation, and they're committed to startups. And startups are what build the economy, because there are a lot of great corporations, but and there are a lot of great people who work at corporations. But startups are really what fuel the economy by hiring all the new crops of people, by creating innovation, and by building large corporations. Sprocket is great. It's about innovation, and it's about getting the startups in here, getting them noticed, getting their products sold, but also helping them find uh, a voice, helping them get out to the people, get some press, and most importantly, in their cases, get funding. Uh, a, a company called Amp Live is there, and they're doing great stuff. We were talking about this yesterday. It's not just about creating the content e anymore. Even for a production company, you have to market to the audience. A video that you do as a production has a lot more value when you can turn to the client and say, I can help you get 100,000 or 200,000 targeted viewers on that instead of just, here's my video. Right. If you do a 20,000, 50,000, $100,000 project, hand it to a client, everybody needs video now, they commit to it, and then they get two views on it, they're never going to do it again, and if they do, they're never going to call you again because you didn't deliver what they needed. Exactly. And yeah. everybody thinks they need viral, and that's not the answer. So yep. small broadcasting companies can now go to Amp Live or services like that, and they can go find their audience and they can do it for very reasonably, and you can't have any content without marketing it. It's such an interesting thing and such a silly thing that people don't realize that. The big networks market, you wouldn't know where the Super Bowl was if NBC or CBS didn't tell you a thousand times the Super Bowl's on NBC or CBS this year at four o'clock on Sunday. You wouldn't know when Grey's Anatomy starts. They all market their shows, and we live in a world where we don't think about marketing our content. We're just content creators, but we, now we have to start thinking about that, and it's very interesting. You go to a client, and you say, I can help you get viewership on it. So the first question when you sit down and you start talking about a project, one of the first questions you say is, where are you delivering this? What's your goal? And have you bought airtime? And, and if you haven't, what do you want to do with it? Right. And you need to know that so you can advise them. Because honestly, I've walked away from projects as a production company. Oh, sure. Because they said, well, we don't know what we're doing and we don't want to talk about it or they don't have a plan. We just want to make the video. Kind of You're never going to call yeah. me again. I don't want to take your money and right. never come back. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, so, uh, so what are you going to do tonight? It's Wednesday night. This is the last real big day of the show. Tomorrow's a big day, too. It's, it's just kind of like a half day. What but are you doing? You want to go out? 
Oh, Come yeah, on, right. man. We, we've hit it off. We should hang. I'll get my crew together. With your crew, we'll have a big party. You're going to rest, we can, aren't we, you? Well, actually, I'm invited to a, to a really cool party tonight. Maybe yeah. we can find a way to get you guys in that there. That would it's be cool. Be really swanky. That, I would, we would really love that. Really swanky. If, if you're serious, we would take you up on it. I want to show yeah. my crew a good time. That was okay. the plan. Uh, I, honestly, I want to go to bed. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> rest up for not tomorrow. Not happening now. It's pal. not. No, no, no. <laughs> I would, we would love that. Thank okay. you. Okay. Awesome. Yes, that would be great. All right. So, again, uh, Michael Artsis, good friend of mine. We're going to do a lot of stuff together. It's going to be great. Uh, you're watching the NAB Show Live program here, with, produced by Broadcast Beat from the 2016 NAB Show. We'll be right back. I'm Kerry Sanders, a correspondent with NBC News. I'm in Tampa right now, and you're watching NAB Show Live. Vegas. This is NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Beat. Here's your host, Ryan Salazar. Ryan Salazar here at the 2016 NAB Show. Man, there's a lot of cool toys here. I'm excited to have another discussion with with some more folks. Um, talk about what you guys do. I've got Ron Sabatino from GPL Tech. How you, Technologies. Hi. How you doing? Very good, thank you. Talk about your company. So GPL Technology specializes in production IT, which is a little different from normal IT. So most of our customers are doing visualization, whether it's feature films, television, music video, architecture. There's a need to produce visuals very quickly. Excellent. All right, so then I've got Robert Whiting from Hawthorne. How are you doing, sir? Right. Hello, nice to be. Um, company I work for does a lot of live events and things in the UK and around Europe, a little bit in the US, not too much at the moment. And we're using a lot of uh, NVIDIA's IRAs technology to be able to quickly produce pre-visualizations to sell to clients to show them what you can get out of the events industry and what you can do, so. Excellent, and, uh, and our pals from NVIDIA, Michael Kaplan, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, how you doing? Doing great. Of course, everybody knows what NVIDIA does, right? That's but go right. ahead. So we're the world leader in visual computing, and what it means at a show like NAB is you'll see us in about 85 partner booths. We're doing 3D modeling, color grading, transcoding, effects, virtual sets. There's so much of a technology presence we have here and it's a great show for us because this is the leading edge of graphic technology and to be used in a broadcast centric methodology is a, is a perfect play for us. All right, and, and Barton Galboy, is that right? Yes. Oh, I said pronounced it right. You're also with NVIDIA. Right, I, I focus in on the entertainment side, the film, visual effects side of uh, the business. Okay, so visual effects and, and, and computing and visual, uh, well, visualization, go ahead right. and start talking. So. It's a little bit different from your normal IT because we deal with render farms and being able to take the creative process from a long, long cycle of the, the creation and waiting for frames to come out to speeding that up. Right. So the faster you can see your results, the faster you can make a change and the faster you can present it to your client. Right. And that's where we partner with NVIDIA okay. to provide the solutions to make that process go faster and faster. All right, and so for some folks that uh, don't understand what GPL Technologies does, really cool company. You know, say you're a major motion picture facility or a producer, and you need to build a studio like like that. Like that. And you get, they've got a ton of inventory in the Los Angeles area. They can just build a studio on the fly. Yeah, so we'll, we'll sell or we'll rent, because a lot of our customers are project-based. Okay. And if you have a project that's only going to last three to six months, maybe you don't want to buy all of that gear until you know there's another one. So we'll just rent it to you, but we provide the engineering to go along with that. So you can be an artist, creative-led company, have no IT support whatsoever, and we'll come in and make sure you've got the right gear and do the right thing. All right, so clearly you guys are integrated in some fashion. You guys are working together all the time. We're an NVIDIA elite partner. We work very closely with these guys. Okay, so NVIDIA, so what do you guys do when you guys are building projects and you need a studio built in a couple of weeks or something? Right, so we're a technology company. We're a platform provider. And right. we, we toss it to a company like GPL to implement that at a customer site. So, you know, we're not the only story in a project, so we're part of it. So GPL has the, has the knowledge and the know-how to actually take us, utilize us, as well as bring other partners involved from a technology situation to make sure that that installation is what the customer needs. All right, and uh, uh, is it Michael? Rob. No, I'm sorry, not Michael, Robert. Yeah. Robert, so so just go a little more in depth about, about what you're doing. Um, a lot of it is the events we do, everything from corporate side of things, even to sets like this where we're um, providing a service to a production company who wants to have a conference for maybe a we do a lot of hedge, hedge fund work, so big banking organizations. And um, a lot of them we have to show in advance what they're going to get out of it. So do they want to spend that million pound conference uh, and get actually the effects they want, what, they get, what they're getting for their money, really. So we'll use 
um, sort of 3D models of the sets, build it up, show them what it's going to look like, and things like that. Using the NVIDIA IRA, it gives us really technology to, with clients sit beside you. You can say, here's what your event's going to look like. The guy in this seat who's paying £100,000 to sit there, here's his view. It gives you instant... Yeah, back, you and, and when, you, when you're building a facility, you, know, you have to put all this stuff in, into uh, in account, you know, when you're, you know, rendering time, storage, uh, the, the backbone of your network, essentially, you know, you, is it going to be, is it going to be fiber, is it going to be 10 gig E, how's that, how's that going these days, it, it's, it's changing the way, it's, I mean, I just heard about 40 gig fiber yesterday. Yeah, 40 gig, 50 gig, 100 gig, it's changing, and we'll come in, we'll work with a customer and decide with them what's going to best suit them. What, what do they need to enhance their creative workflow? Because at the end of the day, if you can't produce your quality content, right. you're not in business. And if the backbone is going to slow you down, then you're not going to get as many iterations out. And that's the key. It's so competitive out there, being able to sit with a customer, use this technology to show many more iterations on something gives you a serious advantage. Okay. And so, uh, so Michael, um, you guys have built and designed some really crazy cool graphics cards, mm -hmm. and 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 I've I've used quite a few of them. Thank you. Um, talk a little bit about about the different models and and, and how so you right now we just recently it goes by architecture. So we just made a transition from our Kepler architecture to our Maxwell architecture. We just introduced a low end product called an M two thousand. We kind of go up by numbers, and then on the high end it goes to an M six thousand. So we introduced the low end M two thousand, which is a great price performance card. Um, and then the M6000, from a high-end standpoint, it could be used in a flame suite. It could be used for VR. Uh, the type of texture memory that's used for that is great for what we're talking about in terms of building sets. It takes texture memory to create oh, the sure. set and stuff it into a GPU. We're now up to 24 gig. It's the most capable compute and, and texture memory card out in the market. So what's the real estate on something like that inside of it's a It's a dual slot PCI, if that's what you mean. That's nuts. It's pretty good, <laughs> and it's pretty fast. Wow. And then if you, if you can imagine taking eight of those and putting them in a chassis, that's what GPL does for us. So we have a product called VCA, which is a eight-way M6000 machine for compute, for rendering. He had mentioned, I think, iRay. I'm going to let Bart talk a little bit about iRay, because we have sure. some pretty exciting things with Cinema 4D and some of the plug-in strategy. Yeah, go ahead, Bart. Hi, yes, uh, so we can actually enhance the I interactive experience you're having on some of these content creation platforms like Cinema 4D, and uh, we use these big, you know, these big uh, installations, these big racks to actually make the interactive rendering much faster so that it, it aids the creative process for the artist. Wow, I mean, it's, so, all right, so when you have your, uh, maybe you the, are the guy, I've heard this story before from GPL, I, I know them very well, um, and the founder, Brian Terrell, uh, if I spelled, if I said it right, mm -hmm. yes, you but did. Um, he's an awesome guy. He's helped us out uh, quite a few times. Um, but you guys have like weekly meetings to make sure that you're up to date with the hardware and making sure it's all good. Are you meeting with these guys? You're meeting Absolutely. with other teams? It, it's a very strong partnership, and you can't do it on your own. You you need their know-how and knowledge to help you provide the best solution for a customer. Well, to 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 be on top of it, that you know, you're going to have input directly with the manufacturer all the time. It's, yeah, it's, and there's, awesome. there's so many advances coming out and so many different technologies, so many different ways to use the technology. Mm -hmm. But it really all goes back to the creative process, and these guys enable you to have that creative workflow. Cool. Now, so let's talk a little bit more about, like, render farms, for example. I was just at uh, visiting some friends at Silverdraft uh, just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, they just, it's crazy. You know, they, they, they first got known when they brought, when they pulled in a truck a couple years ago. I, well, I don't know if I call it a truck, maybe a semi. Devil and demon, right? Yeah, they brought that sucker in and everybody's just freaking out in the, in the parking lot and I didn't have a chance to check it out at that time. But um, so let's talk about rendering and building massive, let's think uh, motion picture scale, like Sony Pictures Entertainment or something. Sure, so, I mean, and again, rendering today for, for that film level situation is, it's a CPU-based type situation. A lot of render farms are built on CPUs. Where the NVIDIA technology comes into play is if, if the scene set or the scene size is capable of fitting into texture memory, then we could use partners such as a V-Ray with V-Ray RT, uh, Redshift, Furry Ball. There's many GPU-based rendering technologies. Uh, Otoy is another one. Um, that that starts to take advantage of the GPU and the, and the multiple cores on a GPU to parallelize that render process. And then if you don't want to go down the path of a GPU rendering piece of software, you could take a look at something like Mental Ray, which, which oh, that, sure. that's what 
Barton works on and talk a little bit about what, what, what Metal Ray can do from a GPU standpoint with some of the new things we've recently done. Well, typically, uh, film studios like the flexibility they get in their renderers, mm -hmm. and so they t typically use CPU-based renderers, and it's, and it's a very hard sell, typically, to say, I'm going to put GPUs on, on our render farm. So this render farm where we make all the different frames, right, from a whole animation sequence, the, uh, typically they're all CPU-based right now. But we're introducing new technology where you use both the CPU and the GPU and they can guarantee that from frame to frame it's the very same look so that you can start in an incremental fashion adding GPUs into your render farm. So we think with some of the new technology we're introducing with Metal Ray and that other rendering companies could copy that we could start getting GPUs more into the actual render farm and finishing shots, which means the movies get made faster. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll just share a story. So I, I'm, an, I'm a production engineer myself. Right. Um, I recently built a, a render farm uh, with the guys over at Silver Draft. Um, 2,100 cores, just wanted to share it because it's yeah. just crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, 2,100 cores, that's uh, got storage, you know, it's like 96 terabytes, fiber channel, uh, eight gig, straight to the top of the Silver Draft. It's got like a controller unit and 60 render nodes and the thing screams. But what's neat is that it's all one connection to the control unit and then these other units are connected over in Finiband at 56 gigs per second, which is just like crazy. So you're, you know, your bottleneck is your eight gigs of fiber, I guess, at that point. It's just amazing that the power behind this stuff is crazy. And I can't even imagine what it's like at the motion picture facilities what they've got going on. Actually, when I was a kid, I worked with a, uh, I, I, was, I had an honor of doing something in Los Angeles, uh, and, and they took me to a, a facility that did the, they showed me the render nodes that actually did the rendering for Star Wars. I was actually standing in front of the gear. It was really cool. And the old computers, you know, they had like, they were pointing at like six, eight computers at the time or something crazy. It's like, this rendered some of this stuff, but it's just, it's cool, the stuff that you guys do. I think I find it very impressive, so. Um, so, as far as uh, build-outs, how, how quickly can you build a facility out? Depends on how big it's going to be. We can provide everything from the firewall through the network, through workstations, render nodes. You know, we have stuff sitting on the shelf. You can call us up today and say, you know what, let's have a discussion, and tomorrow or the next day we need stuff on site. Right, yeah, I've heard, I've heard crazy stories like that where, where you know, folks yeah, need to animate. And a lot of our customers, an animation facility they overnight. have deadlines, and right. things happen. Somebody makes a change, takes a little longer to render. It's nice. They pick up the phone, call us, and say, hey, we need a few more nodes, but we need them now. Right. All right, so let's talk about the excitement behind the 2016 NAB show, what you guys are seeing that's related to what you do. Could you talk about that, Michael? Sure. I'll start because I think I need to with virtual reality. Sure. Right? Oh, Every yeah. hall that I'm walking through, I'm just hearing customers say something about virtual reality. It's an important play for NVIDIA. Um, you know, we have a lot of technology as a platform to help developers, whether you're an engine company or an end user customer, to help with your, your build, right? We have rendering technologies, SLI technologies that build towards VR, right? Everything's going that way, uh, whether it's 360 stitching and we can help with that stitching process or you build an immersive environment, the GPU necessity is amazing. If you're a gamer and you do a 1080 type HD game, to get to the VR necessity, you're seven times more compute centric on a GPU than you are in a normal game. So we love that fact, right? But First experience on VR needs to be a good experience, right? So it's, it's the photons and the, the motion of the head-mounted display. You don't want to get sick, so you got to keep it up as fast as possible. And I just see so much going on at this show. From a VR standpoint, that's, that's an exciting piece of technology that we're into, and I can tell at this show everybody's doing it. Oh, yeah, it's, and, and, and I truly believe, you know, 3D kind of, let's just be honest, it kind of came and it kind of went the next year. It was really big at NAB the, that, the year that it came out, and I spoke with, uh, Pals with uh, Vince Pace, James Cameron's partner, right. really cool guy. Um, I spoke with him at the Dolby booth. They were making a big announcement at the time about, I think it was a screenless uh, 3D thing. Um, but that kind of came and went. Um, it's still around, but not as big as it was. And AR, VR, I don't think it's, is, is, I think it's going to last a lot longer than the whole 3D thing. What do you guys think? Well, I'll, I'll say, obviously, we're at NAB, so we're very video-centric here. Sure. But think about um, architecture, walkthroughs be able to, to go into a building before it was even constructed. Think about teaching and having a class go to France or Rome to learn about the Roman Empire and not have to get on a plane to do that. Medicine, manufacturing, you want to test drive a car, it's hard for that lot to have every right. color you want. 
but once you drive it through VR, you can experience change the rims, change the interior. That's yeah. all virtual. I, I heard a crazy uh, thing yesterday. Somebody said that they, they, well, they want to shoot weddings that way. I even, and this sounds kind of wild, but I heard funerals. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of interesting. So, but hey, so so uh, Robert, right? Yeah. Okay. So, how virtualization uh, enables artists to make, or how does virtualization enable art artists to uh, to make decisions and do them faster? It's that workflow is rather than traditionally hit render, go make a tea, come back the following day, then see you've done something wrong, having to redo it. The GPU technology makes it pretty much instant, so you can quite easily build up your um, your workflow quickly change something and say, yeah, I like that. No, I don't like that. So as an artist's perspective, it's, it makes so many more iterations and a lot more time to do it and things. It makes all the difference. Yeah. So you can really get a really polished final thing very quickly. Um, so as far, uh, go, go ahead and, uh, and Bart, just talk a little bit about your booth and what you guys have on display right now. Oh, well, we're displaying both uh, iRay and Mental Ray being enhanced with GPU acceleration. Two, two different forms of it. The iRay, we actually can uh, go off-site and use a big uh, stream, stream the processing off-site using things like the VCA, a uh, big cluster of VCAs, and, and, and make this interactive experience inside of like a, an application like 3DS Max, right? It's, this, it's very similar to, to what Robert is using when he's using Cinema 4D. It's a, there's this... Uh, interactive experience that we're enhancing. We're making it much faster using GPU acceleration. Now, the other thing is we're also showing Mental Ray, which is a, typically a film, a CPU-oriented render that is GPU accelerated. The whole thing isn't running on the GPU for that incredibly fast interactivity, but it's there to speed up film quality, really high quality rendering in a new way so that that whole area of the business has now got a, a way to accelerate and, and, and progress with the same kind of technology using you know, GPU acceleration. Okay. Hey, Robert, I'm just curious. So you're a cinema guy. Yeah, that's right. Um, do you work in Maya at all? Uh, not particularly. I'm mainly just cinema. I'm, I'm presenting on their booth, okay. booth this, this week. So. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, but back to what we were saying about the remote work. I've been sitting in the UK rendering in the US live. <laughs> it's quite amazing, really, sitting there. You can live sit knowing that it's somewhere else in the US, it's the distance, it's streaming technology is great. Wow, so what's, the, I mean, so I, the render farm that I had built, it was all CPU based, but it seems like it's kind of like a mixed bag, like I, it's, it's all, it's a preference thing, I guess, at with, this point. With iRay, it's great because it uses not just the CPUs, it's GPU as well. Okay. So traditionally, if you're doing just um, your GPU stuff, you'd okay. hit a, a wall, you'd be building your 3D models, getting more and more complex, and you'd hit a wall when your graphics cards can't handle that kind of stuff. What's great with um, IRA is you hit that wall, it'll then go, okay, we'll just use your CPU and move on to that. Which means you've got that kind of buffer, so instead of having to run out and or contact these guys for more nodes, you've got that bit of a buffer so it can keep working while you sort out those issues. All right, I, and just my, my ignorance, I don't know what IRA is exactly, but okay. it'd be great if you could explain it. I, I keep thinking of, because of that farm I built, <laughs> it was V-Ray, you know, we use V-Ray right. to do that right. stuff, and that's a pretty popular uh, uh, you know, render engine, but yeah. go ahead and explain IRA. IRA is um, it's, it's, it's Nvidia's um, rend G GPU render engine, really. There's, there's a few of them out there. Um, is it made by Chaos Group that does V-Ray? No, no. Okay. No, it's Nvidia's product. Oh, so. got it. Sorry about that. It's yeah. a physically <laughs> based render. <laughs> been a long day. <laughs> so, say it again. It's a physically based render. Yeah. Physically based render. Yeah. So it's um, like architects love to use it because they can say, I want this type of lighting in my environment, and it'll be the actual lighting characteristics of the bulbs you're gonna. In. Oh wow! Yeah, it's amazing how you can you can conceptualize and, and do the yeah. craziest things with render. And iRay, it's photo real. So imagine you're looking through a camera. That's the output that iRay is going to do. And again, with CPU and GPU, if you've got a client over your shoulder and, and they say they want to, what's the scene going to look like at five o'clock at night when the sun starts to set? It's literally live rendering. iRay can start to do that yeah. shadowing and that light bounce interactively. So you can rotate the scene. You can see it resolve almost real time and based on how much. GPU compute you have behind it, it's going to resolve faster. But it's a good way to, you know, you want to get something approved and you want to have a director say, move it right, move it left, show me what it looks like at night, show me what it looks like in the morning. iRay, uh, our ray tracing technology has the capability of doing that.
Okay, so when you're when you're rendering in, I, I've seen like distributed rendering. Mm -hmm. So you're in you're in Maya and you see the little boxes going crazy. You know, this box is a node, that box is a node. Is 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 it sort of like that with Not your stuff, or is it kind quite, of just an all-in-one? It's all more in one? It's, a, it's instant and then it refines itself. So you get a straight. In, in instant change, you can see how a good overview and it refines itself and gets more and more refined, and then you change again, it starts again. But it's so you don't have the box, you have to wait for the area you're looking up here as it goes around as you get in Maya or, or traditional render engines. It's okay, hey Barton, I think you wanted to chime in, right? No, I or just Barton, say, I'm if sorry. you're thinking about the little boxes, you can just think of this whole that whole process only on steroids, right? It's just going super fast and it's across the whole thing. Little needles of, you, you get of light just coming at it's you. It's almost like looking through a screen. Okay. And then pixels are refining themselves, but you basically can see and make judgment calls off of the first iteration. You can see instantly the lighting's going to work or not work. Oh, and it is a live Before you live wait render. for it to resolve, yeah. you can move on and, and change to the next thing. Yeah, if you look at it, the, the boxes are always related to a CPU somewhere in a computer. So CPUs, you may have a machine that has eight, for example, where your, your GPU will have thousands of cores. So it's like thousands of boxes doing it all at once. So it's okay. like and, that acceleration. And for us, it, you know, because not everybody might want to learn another render piece right. of software, we're doing this as a plug-in strategy. So within 3ds Max, Maya, and Cinema 4D, there are now plugins, and as well as manufacturing software, there are now plugins for iRay. So you can render, choose to render out iRay to get that photo reel. The end user doesn't really need to know anything or learn too much more because it's there. And, and our go-to-market strategy is to try to do the plug-in story to make sure that it can be implemented into a tool that they know today. Okay, so that's at the, at the user's level. So if I'm an artist and I've got the, the cards in my computer, it's just basically live rendering on my local machine. So in a farm environment, does that work too with your stuff? You could batch render or you yeah. could be interactive on your machine. You could batch render over a network. You could batch render to multiple chassis of like what Silverdraft is doing, right? Yeah. They could be interactive on one piece of hardware, they could be batch rendering on another piece of hardware. Um, in the VCA technology that Ron's company, GPL, represents, you can, you can InfiniBand connect multiple VCAs and interact render off of all of those. Wow, so yeah, talk a little bit about virtualization because this has got to be something you guys do like crazy. Sure, sure. Uh, virtualization using the grid technology allows you to say, instead of putting workstations under everybody's desk, you can have one server in the machine room, keep it locked down, keep it where everything stays nice and cool, right. but still have a workstation experience out at the user's desk. And you can define, depending on how much memory they need, whether you're going to have eight, 16 users, maybe only four users, and you can instantly change that. Even if somebody's off-site, they can log in with a laptop. It doesn't have to be a high-end laptop, but they can get that high-end workstation experience. And if something happens to the laptop, there's no data at risk because all the data is right. in the data center. Right. Okay. As far as render managers go, do you guys have like your choice uh, manager? Have you guys dealt with managers? Uh, we do. We, we leave it a lot up to the customer yeah. if they prefer to work with Cube or Deadline. Sure. Um, iRay Server is something fairly new, and iRay Server is very cool because you can have a machine with multiple GPU cards that's not in front of you, and you say, I need a little extra horsepower, tap into that, and it will render into your viewport. Cool, very cool. All right, well again, I just, uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us, guys. Thank you. Uh, love talking renders. I know some, some folks kind of think it could be a boring topic, but. And, and, but, I, but I think it's an amazing topic because uh, it's what powers the movie industry and animation and, and that stuff is so awesome. So thank you so much for being with us. Again, uh, let's make sure I got all their names right. Ron Sabatino from GBL Technologies. Thank you. Rockstar. Robert Whiting from Hawthorne. Hi. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Michael Kaplan with NVIDIA and Barton Galboy with NVIDIA as well. Thank so you very much. Thanks so much for spending some time with us, guys. We'll have to Thank chat you. again after the show uh, sure. and get you in some Skype interviews. Again, this is the 2016 NEB Show. You're watching NEB Show Live, and we'll be right back.